If anybody wants to gift me 500 bottles of this, I would love to take them. I'm sorry, Jeremy. If you want my rare and discontinued Invictus Aqua 2016, then you're gonna have to give me at least $500. And if you want my even more rare Reeve Gauche by YSL, then you're gonna have to give me that Ferrari with your name on it. Most likely you have loved fragrances in the past that then disappear and become discontinued on the market and eventually hike up in price so much that you have to sell an arm and a leg to acquire them. Hence the Ferrari joke for Jeremy. I don't actually want his automobile unless he really insists on me uh, driving it. And if you haven't experienced this phenomenon yet, then don't worry, you will. And in fairness, I do think most of the time companies discontinue things because of IFRA. If you read a bit about them and see just how strict they are, their regulations change pretty much every year and things will inevitably get taken off the shelves. Uh, and of course, some people do say it's because of money, reasons to save money or for marketing purposes. I'm not sure, uh, but either way, discontinuation happens. There are some gems in the past that the community loved or sometimes people actually didn't know about these fragrances when they did exist. So I'm making this video to tell you guys about these discontinued gems and giving you guys replacements for them that currently exist today. These replacements aren't necessarily clones, they're not necessarily going to be as similar as possible, although some of them are similar, but overall we're trying to recreate the vibe that the discontinued fragrances used to give or potentially some of these new fragrances were actually inspired by these older fragrances. We've got five to go through today, let's get into it. Guerlain's L'Homme Ideal Cologne. This was honestly one of the best summer fragrances that existed on the market. In my opinion, you were paying 20 pounds for a fragrance that smelled like it costed 100 pounds. It was that fragrance that was on everyone's list, that was the designer that smelled like niche. This was incredible for the price. Maybe you can still find it in your country for something reasonable, uh, but it was Guerlain's masterpiece essentially. It was, it was a citrus creamy fragrance for the summertime that had that very distinct almond note in there. And even though it was light and airy, it lasted only eight hours, which was incredible. Almost basically the perfect daytime uh, summer signature. It smells unisex. The almond just gives it that distinct, unique factor to it that makes it memorable. Uh, this was truly art in a bottle. Here is its replacement. It's not exactly the same scent profile, but it's a very similar vibe. Chanel's Allure Homme Edition Blanche. This is nowhere near as good value for money. You do have to spend a fair bit to get this. It's still worth it. This is still one of my favorite summer fragrances of all time. It's a similar vibe of a citrus elegant fragrance for your daytime warm weather signature. Uh, instead of the almond note going here, this is more of a lemon meringue pie is what this is recreating. It's more heavy on the musks. This is more of a handsome fragrance in my opinion. It's more masculine than L'Homme Dial Cologne, which I think was more of a unisex fragrance. Uh, that is a, a memorable fragrance. It's a masterpiece. It's a shame that we don't have it. Uh, this still though can give you that very similar presentation. It doesn't last as long. This gets six hours with myself instead of the eight hours with, uh, with L'Homme Dial. I still think this is a masterpiece also and worth checking out if you want to replace L'Homme Dial Cologne. Bulgari's Aqua Amara. This was the first fragrance I ever blind bought based on Jeremy's suggestion and this surprised me. Um, actually, I gave it away initially because I didn't like it after a few weeks, but then eventually it stays in your mind because this is actually such a, a unique masterpiece. It is a very bitter, metallic, aquatic orange. It's extremely masculine, lasts on you 14 hours and is just dominating. Like this stuff, there's no other aquatic fragrance that's ever existed like it. And to this day, there's nothing in the summer designer market that will replicate this sort of character, in my opinion. The replacement for it has a very similar vibe. I smelled them before this, recording this video on a paper strip. They're very similar in their vibe, but the, the replacement is more sweet. The new Dior Homme Sport 2021. Orange is not listed in its note breakdown, but to me, it does smell like a sweet orange fragrance with a lot of woodiness in there and an earthy dry down. It is masculine, it is elegant, it is long lasting, not 14 hours, more eight hours, but it does have that same sort of dominance in it, in this character that is reminiscent of Bulgari's Aqua Amara, in my opinion. Uh, again, it's difficult to match up that uh, classic 
but I still think this is a very nice release. This is easier to wear than Aqua Amara in my opinion, even though Amara did give me a lot of compliments also. Uh, I think this is safer, definitely. Invictus Aqua 2016. I also blind bought this because back in the day when this was discontinued, everybody went crazy for it. Everyone hyped this up so much. And I think it was unwarranted, to be honest. I think it doesn't deserve that much hype. It's an okay fragrance. It's nice, it's got me a lot of compliments. It is a loud Invictus flanker with a lot of saltiness in there. This is basically a very salty masculine take on the original sort of juvenile <laughs> Invictus. The original Invictus, I think, isn't quite as good as this. They're both good fragrances, but I think this is still very youthful in essence also. Again, the main th character here is the saltiness and how well it performed as well. People love good performing summer fragrances. They're becoming more rare these days. This lasted about eight hours with a moderate amount of projection. But honestly, you can get a similar fragrance with Invictus Legends. This honestly is a similar scent profile. It's the same opening of that bubblegum sweetness with a bit of soapy uh, character in there as well. And then it dries down to the saltiness. There's a big amount of salty notes in here, in my opinion. And the only difference I would say is that this is more sweet. Still summer appropriate, but slightly more sweet. And actually, I think this is a better flanker than Aqua 2016. I don't think it's worth buying Aqua 2016 for the ridiculous prices uh, for it. Hey, even Mont Blanc Legend Spirit exists. You can get that fragrance. I think this is a superior flanker. It's still great performing eight hours without projection. I said in our summer list, this could be used for clubbing. I think this is a really sexy fragrance and actually a solid flanker from the line. YSL's Rive Gauche Pour Homme. Now this is a truly rare beauty. I don't even want to think about how high the prices for this are going to be now. I was very lucky to find this on a Facebook group from someone, a kind seller. This was a classic men's shaving cream barbershop fragrance. Very much like a classic shaving cream um, scent with a very uh, prominent spiciness. The lavender was very prominent, the woodiness was very prominent, it's extremely long lasting, this is over 10 hours, this is easy signature stuff right here. It's a little bit outdated in my opinion, it, I think this was made in 2002, something along those lines. It does feel like it was something of that era. There are new barbershop fragrances nowadays I think was, were definitely uh, inspired by this masterpiece. And that would be Tom Ford's Fougere d'Argent. I think Beau de Jour was also inspired by Rive Gauche. I think Tom Ford in general loved this fragrance. He did work for YSL at one point as well, actually. Um, and I think they've taken inspiration from Rive Gauche with Fougere d'Argent, made it more modern. Instead of being so spicy like the uh, like the original Rive Gauche, this, this is actually more of a modern ambery uh, touch on this fragrance. So this is a more smooth fragrance in my opinion, a slightly more sweet barbershop fragrance, but overall still very fresh, sharp, clean. This is my signature fragrance. I think this is so, so slept on in the community. I don't know why more people don't talk about Fougere d'Argent. Uh, honestly, I think probably my favorite barbershop fragrance currently on the market. And it lasts 10 hours, gives me a soft projection. And lastly, a cold weather fragrance, Thierry Mugler's Pure Malt. I mean, I could probably just have the entire Amen line in this video and just try to find replacements for all of them. They were very uh, distinct, creative, and memorable fragrances that are very hard to replicate. It's very hard to find something that's an exact clone of this. In my opinion, Pure Malt is the best from the Amen line. It is my favorite. Uh, probably the best boozy fragrance I've ever smelt in a designer game. It is a loud and balanced boozy fragrance that combined very unique notes of malt and peat, as well as the whiskey notes, um, with very fresh notes as well. It's very aromatic, easy to wear, easy to love. I'm wearing it right now. And even though it was, it was a fresh boozy fragrance that was so nicely balanced, it still lasted for 10 hours in moderate projection. Definitely an option for clubbing. This replacement is not for clubbing, it's a similar vibe, uh, but your performance is gonna come down a bit. It's going to be CH Men's Privé. Similar vibe of being a fresh, boozy, sexy fragrance. Very casual, fun, and inviting. As I said, it's not exactly a clone, uh, but you are gonna probably gonna love this if you like pure malt, honestly. I can't see how you wouldn't. It's still based on lavender, based on the whiskey note as well balanced, very beautiful scent. I get six hours, some people get a little bit less than that, so overspray, apply it on your clothes. You're gonna wear this for date fragrance, uh, for a date night um, experience. It's more of a close encounter seductive fragrance. 
but hey, I still think this is worth owning as well. And as a bonus, I never smelled Valentino V, but if you do want a replacement of that, apparently that was one of Valentino's best fragrances, you go for a Sassy Dara, which was a dirt cheap, floral, spicy, vanilla fragrance you can wear in the cold weather for clubbing. So if you want a cheap clubbing fragrance that's apparently extremely close to Valentino V, go for that. Thank you for watching guys. If Jeremy ends up offering me his Ferrari for my Reeve Gauche, I'll let you guys know. What do you think of this video? Did you like the concept? Would you guys like to see a part two of this series? If you would, let me know some discontinued fragrances that you missed in the comments down below and I'll do some research and try to uh, try some fragrances that replicate them in their scent profile or vibe. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.